Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 24th of February 1959. Lust deceiving as loving kindness. Lust can come in and deceiving as loving kindness, metta, during sending metta only for the loved ones not including others. Metta means for everyone without differentiation. If tana comes in, contemplate this mind state first and continue the metta. Someone who overcomes one's own mind knows whatever mind state arises. Without overcome it don't know the mind state. Therefore, there are more unwholesome mind states arising. The best way is contemplating whatever mind state arising. By doing serenity, samatha, practice, defilements can come in the practice. In samatha, if loba or dosa comes in become unstable, and it falls off. Only vipassana can be stable. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 25th of February 1959. Tana deceiving as altruistic joy. Tana and altruistic joy, mudita, are similar in smiling nature. But their objects are not similar. Gladness for all is mudita. If only for someone it is tana. Mudita comes from mindful attention. Have gladness on everyone. Generally, if only for one person, then tana comes in. With a determination whatever mind state arises, I'll contemplate it. And then mostly you can do it. Kama becomes fruitless if tana extinct. Blown away like a cotton wool. Tana is clinging to the candas. Therefore, if you can contemplate the kanda as truth of dukkha, tana will extinct. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 26th of February 1959. Selfishness deceiving as equanimity. Some people sometimes were using language like equanimity, but including selfishness and anger. Equanimity means seeing all living beings in equilibrium according to their own kamas. By checking the nature of the language and the voice can know true equanimity or not. Envy, issa, selfishness, makariya, dosa, Anger, worry and remorse, kakaka, can combine together. In seeing just seeing only, in hearing just hearing only, etc. Become equanimity, a pekka. Whatever arising, just know it arising or contemplate impermanence. If you don't know about these will become ignorance, a vija. There is a Burmese word came from the Pali word a pekka. Its meaning is indifferent. Here Sayadaw referred to this kind of apekka as selfishness and anger. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 27th of February 1959. Worry and sorrow entering as sense of urgency. Samvega, sense of urgency, this Pali word may be the less well-known or even unaware outside the Theravadan tradition. In Burma this word become a common Burmese word as anaka, dukkha, anatta. It seems to me it's a very important word for contemplation to search for the meaning of our human existence. As Sayadaw mentioned it's a kind of knowledge, nana, which can push or inspire someone on the path or following the noble eightfold path to end dukkha. We can know this from the real stories of Siddhartha Bodhisattva, Sariputta, etc. in the Pali Suttas and some modern day yogis. Nowadays modern human beings under the influence of the three unwholesome roots tilde greed, hatred and delusion take dukkha as sucker and create a lot of human problems and sufferings in family life, society and bring destruction to natural environments. A Western teacher described the meaning of Samvega as, it's a hard word to translate because it covers such a complex range, at least three clusters of feeling at once. The oppressive sense of shock. Dismay and alienation that comes with realizing the futility and meaning of life as it's normally lived. A chastening sense of our own complicity complacency and foolishness in having let ourselves live so blindly. An anxious sense of urgency in trying to find a way out of the meaningless cycle. Although this talk was very short, there were profound meanings behind it. True Samvega develop intelligent wisdom to great wisdom. If worry, sorrow and dosa come in, it can be suicidal. Committed suicide and accumulation of unwholesome mental states are also an interesting point. Nowadays more people, young or old, 
committed suicide than before, because we accumulate more and more pollutants, rubbish, into our hearts every day from many unhealthy ideas or poisoned educations. Closing square bracket. Sense of urgency, samvega, is knowledge, intelligence or nana. But with it worry remorse and dosa can come in. People committed suicide were because of their accumulation of unwholesome mental states. We have to abandon unwholesomeness, pahataba. Have to develop wholesomeness, bhavataba. This last point usage of abandoning, pahataba, and developing, bhavataba, actually referred to the whole mental development. Practicing each factor of the Noble Eightfold Path also has this meaning. So each factor is important in its own. It's right effort. In the 37 factors of enlightenment, effort is 9 times, sati is 8 times, wisdom is 5 times and samadhi is 4 times mentioned respectively. The Thai forest monks in their talks very often mentioned as sati, panna. Sayadaw also very often mentioned it important as the whole practice, i.e., Pankangika Magga or Vipassana knowledge. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, 28 February 1959 Take anger as wholesome. Take anger as wholesome. These words by Sayadaw was remarkable. Like a prediction by him for modern man civilization. Even it's become like a human education. You can see this very clear. A lot of violence and harmfulness are going on in nearly every part of human civilization, economics, politics, cultures, religion etc. Actually we are not only take anger as wholesome, also the others two unwholesome roots, greed and delusion. For modern man whatever their religion's background, actually they are worshipping the trinity gods without their knowing, i.e., ignorance, avidya. Closing square bracket. Some people use harsh language to teach people, parents, teachers and religious leaders, etc., and take it as wholesome mental state. One who always knows it when any wholesome or unwholesome mental state is arising truly overcomes his mind. It's also need to analyze the nature of the mind state. Therefore, contemplation on mind, sitanupasana, is important. The voice comes from the mind is significant. Even animals can differentiate it. The Buddha said that angry person easy to get old. Sayadaw gave an example. Throwing a stone with anger and by frightening to someone are not the same factors. With anger is more painful. It's harmful to both. Therefore, it's harmful to the body. With sorrow, tears run down. With fright, hairs and goose flesh raise up. Because of anger, some people even commit suicide. Go and look at a person's face died with anger. The face looked ugly. With anger, someone even vomits blood, the story of Saraputta's former teacher Sanjaya. Don't take a small anger as insignificant. It can make you sleepless. If you know how to correct the mind, the face also has a good look. Only people have mindfulness can correct oneself. As soon as anger arises, he can contemplate it and will not continue to take action, Kama. Must know when one's mind is not good. Also have to accept the correction of parents and teachers. But not every parents and teachers have the qualities. Where do these states of mind, character, come from? From birth. Most of them come from hells. Sayadaw said we can know the recent past life of any baby from the outwards behavior. For example, if a baby cries a lot, comes from hell and has dosa nature. A baby smiles and happy nature, comes from pleasant existence. A baby sleeps a lot from animal existence. Here the important point is not the past life which had already gone. But very important to reconditioning our bad nature to good nature by training our speech, body and mind. From hells with anger, so they cry a lot and are easier to become angry. Baby with moha whatever happen, they keep quiet. From heaven they speak with smile and happiness. Without correction it becomes worse, for bad characters. If you pickle something for a long time become more and more sour. Originally people's minds are not good. Nothing is good without correction. 
how to make correction or reconditioning, Sayadaw gave a fish meat dish for example. If you let fish in natural state, it's smelly. By using ginger, onion and spices, the smell is nice and tasty. Even the Buddha came out from the bad to goodness. If someone can't distinguish from good and bad, he can't correct himself. We still have time and make the corrections. With many bad things in near death is not easy to correct it. There are two forms of extraction. Extract from the bad and the good. The first one is correcting the bad things and becomes good. The second one is yogi wasting his times by worldly affairs without proper practice. There are three ways of using our times. Good, not good, i.e., bad, and between good and bad. Between good and bad is sleeping. Mostly people are living their lives with bad and between. Therefore, the most important is first to know one's mind. There are two types of crazy people, people with mental instability and crazy ignoramus. People are under the influence of ignorance. Most people are falling into this type. The first one is mental illness. Majority are in the second type. A vijja pakaya sankara to ignorance conditions action to conditioned crazy ignoramus. Mental illness still has medicine. But crazy ignoramus doesn't know the medicine, because everyone is like us, i.e., crazy ignoramus or ignorant people. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 12th of March 1959. Sila and Vipassana. Sayadaw said we should use the clothes and foods by reflection to stop Tanner Rose. We earn the money by right livelihood still without contemplation nothing wrong with Sila, but in Vipassana it's negative. Closing square bracket. By contemplation on food, if disgusting and aversion, dosa, arise, it's also not right. For example, don't want to eat or stop eating. The result should be equanimity. Neither tanna nor dosa should arise. During the Buddha's time some monks committed suicide by reflection on the repulsiveness of the body. Yogi has wisdom faculty easy to develop the perception of food as loathsome, but don't let aversion come in. The way of wisdom is developing, bhavatabha, and abandoning, pahatabha. Loba, dosa, moha have to be abandoned not for developing. Now modern men are doing just these things. It's an important point. Therefore, Sayadaw very often mentioned in his talks about intellectual understanding Nata Parina. If true wisdom, not taking pleasure on foods and drinks, but not become I don't want to eat or drink and it becomes displeasure, Domanasa. If it is wisdom, not continue to Kama, and only to Nibbana. Dosa arises and continues to Kama, see the Patikasamapada. Wisdom is white Dharma and Dosa is black Dharma, can never mix up together. By knowing the differences can do it right. Therefore, the important of contemplation on the mind is quite clear. If it's true particular sana, perception of loathsomeness, it will not become loba and dosa, but only wisdom. Dosa also has their levels. Displeasure in something is domanasa. Becoming quarrel and fighting is aversion, patya. These are refined dharma taught by the Buddha. Both of them are dosa nature. The differences between them are becoming coarser. Here the Buddha wanted to teach was not for patya, but wanted to know the subtlety of domanasa. It is difficult to know. According to Sayadaw, mostly we have vyapada, ill will to foods and clothes, and not become patya. There was a true tragic story happened in Burma. A man used to have his meal every day with chilies and without it couldn't eat. But unfortunately, one day for some reasons or forgotten, his wife not prepared for it. At the dinning place he became very angry and instantly grabbed a firewood near him struck the head of his wife and killed her. If we contemplate the suffering created for, by foods is quite a big problem, e.g., pesticides, chemical, in foods and other pollutions. There was an important sutta in Nidana Samyutta called Patamamsupama Sutta, SN 12-63, a simile of a son's flesh, about the four nutriments, one is physical foods. In human society, 
especially in family members, there are a lot of viapada happening between each other. But usually we say nothing and keep quiet. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 13th of March 1959. To stop craving in everyday life. For any yogi who practices to end dukkha, always makes effort to stop kalesis arising. Therefore, should reflect on the four requisites. Without it, Patikasamapada process continues. With no kalesis come in, then Nibbana element can appear quicker. In wearing clothing with contemplation no kalesa arises. For beautifying is kalesa. Doing with good intention is no fault. Not good intention it is. Whatever we are doing must do it with nana, knowledge. Without it always tana arises. Therefore, always use satipatthana. Conducting with mindfulness can stop tana arising. One can destroy them even if they come in. Never let go of sati. Whatever you are doing reflect as dukkha or these are dukkha. If you have sati and including with varia, they can't separate. Therefore, I have taught you to be mindful, put effort and contemplate with wisdom. It can be say satipatthana or the four right efforts, samapadhana. Why the Buddha sometimes taught as satipatthana and sometimes as samapadhana. However, he said both of them are together. Sati and Varya can't see impermanence. Contemplative wisdom can see it. Therefore, wisdom is the main, and Sati and Varya are supportive factors. Only wisdom can penetrate ignorance. All these points were taught in the Satanipata by the Buddha. Panna is the most important factors of the three, because Sati could also be Micha Sati and Varya be Micha Varya, wrong mindfulness and effort, without Panna whereas there is not so-called Michapana for mundane, Lokya, or supramundane, Lokutra, wisdom respectively. Whatever arising if you can't contemplate impermanence, then one of the factors is lacking. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 14th of March 1959. Mistaken sloth and torpor as serenity. Many yogis might mistake sloth and torpor, Thina Midda, as serenity, Samadhi can't overcome one's mind is Thina Midda. In Vipassana the object of contemplation disappears can be mistaken as path and fruit. For the path knowledge to be appeared, impermanence should be clear before. Following by impermanence cease is also must clear. Follow by impermanence is not clear, and then it's only sloth and torpor. If both of them are clear, then serenity and discernment, samadhi and panna, are together. Sloth and torpor come in and pretend to be samadhi and panna, but yogi doesn't know it. Staying with the meditation object and without it is quite different. Sloth and torpor are two kinds and inclination to the pleasant and the unpleasant. The samadhi is equanimity. Samadhi is intensely looking at the object without pleasure or displeasure. It's concentrating on the object pointing by sati. Therefore, you may differentiate between samadhi and thena midda by the object. If it is samadhi, you don't want to get up from the sitting, whereas it's thena midda and you want to run away. If they come in contemplate impermanence, without it dependent arising continues. No contemplation and running towards your bed is like in the prison, the Buddha's simile for sloth and torpor to King Ajatasattu. Sleeping beds are prisons, the places without the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Sleeping is staying with the life continuum, Bhavanga Chitta. It's bad in refined nature and not in violent way. These are past Kama results, i.e., Bhavanga Chitta, and we are spending it by sleeping. It's neither wholesome nor unwholesome minds. Sloth and torpor are not directly extracting the time, but the Bhavanga Chitta is. When we are in sloth and torpor, a jivana process, active phase of cognitive process, and then bhavanga chitta process, another jivana and then another bhavanga, etc. Sloth and torpor is the jivana mind process. If you go to sleep, bhavanga cheetahs are arising and passing away continuously. Of the two minds of sloth and torpor and bhavanga, thena midda is more fearful one, because it sends the mind into bhavanga. 
Thena Mida is enemy, and Sati is friend. Sayadaw mentioned the importance of Sati with an example. You remind yourself, when I will wake up, and go to sleep. And then when the time comes you wake up automatically. We can also use this method in meditation. Remind us not to forget the object or objects, both Samatha and Vipassana. Sayadaw gave an important warning. With many difficulties before, i.e., with many past lives sufferings, now we are in the time of completing with the five difficulties to encounter it. 1. Encounter the Buddha's teachings. 2. A teacher who can teach Saka Dharma. 3. The ability to understand the Dharmas. 4. Put into practice and discern Anaka. 5. Realize Nibbana. But the majority of Buddhists who are wasting their time by sleeping and busying with Loba, Dosa, and Moha in daily lives are very foolish. Therefore, we must remember of what the Buddha said that the permanent dwelling places of living being are the plains of misery, Apaya Bhumas. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 15th of March 1959. Restlessness and Effort. In Vipassana practice, effort, Varya, always should take one object, for example, the impermanence of physical phenomenon, Rupa object, or the impermanence of mind, Nama object. Instead seeing many things or objects, e.g., like light, color, images, it becomes restlessness, Adaka. But the yogi can take these things as right effort and thinks that his practice is on the right track. What about on Samatha practice? It also should stay with the meditation object, e.g., the breath. Becoming restless is wasting time. Varya and Samadhi must take an object only. The object of restlessness can be loba or dosa, greed or anger. Therefore, Varya and the object are different. Varya makes effort on the object without taking pleasure or displeasure. Varya must stay with the impermanent object. If other things arise, it's adaka. On talking about Samatha and Vipassana practices, e.g., for Samatha, during contemplation on loathsomeness, a subha, the mind should be stay with the object of loathsomeness and should not go out. Then it's varia. Except the asubha object, if many objects come in, then it becomes restless. Varia makes effort on an object. Sayadaw gave an example of using a gun. If you are aiming a gun without moving, it is varia. If shaking then it's adaka. If too much effort it becomes restless. In this case, make adjustment with samadhi. If Varya and Samadhi become level out the practice will take short period of times. The mind becomes restless while it's over Varya, whereas it becomes sleepy and wasting times when over Samadhi. Sayadaw gave example of over Varya and Samadhi, with the stories of Sona, and 6. 55, Sonasatam, and Mahamogalana, S.N. 51. 31, Mogalanasatam. Because over Varya and Samadhi that the practice can't develop. Some yogis become low spirits and make conclusion on many reasons. They are thinking that don't have the paramis and doubt about the practice. In reality, they don't have a teacher and don't know how to adjust them. Connection with this, faith, sadha, and wisdom, panna, have to be adjusted. These four factors becoming level out can discern impermanence. Without that, you can't realize the Dharma. You can't finish a task without faith. Over faith become Tana, and over Pana become cunning. Sariputta had to practice for two weeks because of over Pana and more contemplation was needed. Mahamogalana took only a week to finish his practice.